This is the podcast. Are you ready for takeoff? Welcome back to another Healthy with Heartland podcast. Today we want to briefly discuss one of our more recent newsletters on the topic of natural and all natural food labeling. There seems to be a lot of confusion and misconceptions that go along with this label, as there should be. But first, if you would like to receive these health and wellness inspired monthly newsletters, please comment below or message us and don't forget to like us on Facebook at Heartland Home Foods. All right, so let's dive right in. Do you ever buy products in the stores with these big green labels claiming to be made with natural ingredients or all natural products or even 100% natural? I'm sure you've seen them, you've bought them, and like me and 73% of consumers were trying to make a conscious effort to buy natural because you thought it was a healthier option. However, did you know the term has no clear meaning and is not regulated by any government agency? Comparing this to the 58% of people who seek organic labels, which is actually 15% less than those who shop all natural. Even though organic happens to be backed by hundreds of pages of standards, while natural has an application process, but no inspector or inspection that coincides with the label. Let's just examine the definition of natural. Now, when we researched to find out what natural actually was and how it was defined, because no one's regulating it, there wasn't really much out there. But the USDA does define natural as any food product that does not contain artificial ingredients and preservatives, and the ingredients are only minimally processed. Even the FDA website doesn't have a formal definition of all natural. So to me, it still seems a bit vague and a bit unclear Generally speaking, natural has everything to do with the processing and packaging of an item. What it does not cover is any aspect of how the animal was actually farmed, how the animal was treated, what they were fed, if antibiotics or hormones were used, in the case of plants, were there pesticides used, any other aspects of production that consumers might logically expect from something being labeled natural. There's a lot of loopholes concerned with the labels, and unfortunately, the consumers end up paying more for a product that isn't even guaranteed to be what it says it is. The saying nowadays with industrial agriculture and and these factory farms is bigger, faster, fatter, cheaper, because they're always looking for a way to maximize production and minimize costs. And I think the, the biggest thing to note there is they're doing that for profit. They're not doing anything illegal. This is all done within the legal limits, but they are more concerned with, you know, the bottom dollar. In the newsletter, it actually goes into mention a recent lawsuit with Hormel, where they were actually labeling product, quote unquote, natural choice uh, to entice consumers, as we were speaking on, to buy what they thought were healthier options, while the company was doing as little as possible to hold their end. So basically, the pigs, they live in the poorest conditions. They're fed antibiotics, a whole bunch of other garbage and crazy things, as well as muscle-building drugs. Right. And on the flip side, think about, for example, a chicken breast that was sustainably raised with little to no carbon footprint, you know, no hormones, no antibiotics, and then harvested humanely and placed into chemical-free packaging without any preservatives or additives or added colors. That is what you can consider natural. Absolutely. And I guess, what is there for us to do? What can we do now that we know that Basically, all natural food labels mean pretty much nothing. The only way you can actually guarantee the quality of food you are consuming, in my opinion, is to know exactly where your food comes from. Knowing where your food comes from, it bridges the gap between farm to table. And it really, right now, it seems this gap has grown overwhelmingly large. Yeah, recently. And you know what? Having this connection 
develops that healthy relationship with food, allowing people to appreciate and respect it. And eating should be, you know, this experience, not just a fast, mindless action. Um, it should, you know, nourish and fuel the body. Improving the relationship that people have with food can improve the way that people eat and their overall health. So stay healthy with Heartland. We're here to help. If you have any questions at all, comment below. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tune in every Tuesday at 2 p.m. for our health and wellness podcast. And every Friday for a new recipe with Chef Arden. And once again, stay, stay healthy, healthy with, with Heartland. Heartland.